Angela's Lie Takes on a Life of Its Own by E.T. Rudell Little Angela told a lie. It just rolled off her tongue and through her lips and hit the floor with a thud. It rolled into the corner by the breakfast table in the kitchen of the busy house that was full of her older brothers and sisters getting ready for school. The lie had worked, and now it just sat there in the corner as a dark lump mostly in the shadows away from the light. No one could really see it there as they went on their busy way. Angela thought to herself, having to live with this lie that no one really notices isn't so bad. At first the lie was easy to keep up. No one gave it a second thought. It only had to be fed and maintained whenever anyone remembered that day and asked Angela about it shining some light on the subject. When this happened, she would distract them with things that they had said and done, while jumping out of her chair to block the view of the lie sitting in the corner. While dropping crumbs of deceit into the lie, Angela could hear the lie growing a little larger. She was surprised that no one could hear the lie's tummy rumbling or the pools of drool that plopped onto the floor with each crumb she fed it. Each day, Angela would be the first to get up in the morning to ensure that she sat in a chair that covered her not-so-little lie. She sat in her wooden chair at the breakfast table, worried that she wouldn't be able to remember all the little additions to her lie. The lie sat in the corner, a shadowy dark lump slowly moving up and down with each breath. Its hairy warts pulse goo out each time Angela told a new lie to cover the first. The goo would form around the lump, making it one layer bigger. Its dark red glowing eyes opened ever so slightly when she was the only one in the kitchen. As Angela awoke to the alarm buzzing, she could see the sun rising through her bedroom window. The light prompted all in the room to awaken. Morning time had become her favorite time of day. She would rush through breakfast, glancing over at the lie from time to time. After barely eating from her plate, Angela would leap out the door, shouting back to her sisters, Come on, girls! You don't want to be late! She was able to leave the lie behind while at school, thinking to herself, At least I have half the day in peace without that lump. On this morning, she had to tell another lie to continue her cover-up. That one little lie gave the lump enough strength to slip into her book bag. Angela and her two sisters, Diana and Rosa, walked down the sidewalk to school. Their three brothers, John, Martin, and Vincent, ran in front of them chasing squirrels, dogs, cats, anything that moved. The youngest, Vincent, faded back to his group of sisters, waiting for the moment when Angela was a few steps behind them. Darting up to his sister, he whispered, We know the truth. I saw you. We were outside the window. I was on Martin's back, and he was on John's back. And I saw in. I saw you. Vincent proclaimed with his tiny fists clenched at his sides, chest slowly heaving and eyes never leaving Angela's. You better tell the truth or we'll tell it for you. A word of advice. We don't want it to cost you. Her younger brother said as he looked up to his littlest big sister, pausing for a moment before he ran back to the frantic activities of his brothers. He pointed his fingers at her like a gun, winked and made a sound with his tongue. Angela chased Vincent up the street to catch him back with his band of brothers. Okay, you guys, if you say one word, I'll tell mom what you did last week. You see, I saw you. I saw all of you that day by the garage. What you did was wrong. What we did was stupid. We will be forgiven, but you will have to live with this lie, her oldest brother said to put her in her place as he marched off ahead of her. The lie oozed in her book bag, 
peering out from under the flap, waiting for Angela to tell a few more lies. So come on, Angela. Is it true or is it just a dirty little lie? I mean, I heard Sandy tell Danny that it had to be you, and Martha was nowhere near the room at that time. Rosa said while lifting her chin up so her eyes would look down on her little sister. Angela barked back. Oh, did they say that while they were holding hands under the cafeteria table yesterday? Didn't I see them kissing by the bathroom last week? Why should anyone listen to them? She came to a complete stop with a snap of her shoes on the sidewalk. I'll tell you again, it wasn't me. I wasn't even there. I saw Martha walk out of the room as I came out of the bathroom. End of story. The lie was against her friend. It had to be against someone, and Angela was glad it wasn't her. She blamed Martha for the mean things she had done. With just one whisper of her voice, she told the teacher, It was Martha. I saw her. The lie glowed silently in the book bag, its hairy warts oozing goo, knowing the next lie would come. The girls got to school in time to see the younger children playing on the lawn in front, waiting for the bell to ring. Walking up to the steps to the main door, Angela could hear two of the children arguing over a cookie. Give me back my cookie, the little girl shouted out to the little boy. I didn't take it, the little boy shouted back. Yes, you did, the little girl said while gritting her teeth and reaching over the little boy to grab at his book bag. It's in there. I saw you put it in there. Give me my cookie. The little boy took baby steps backwards away from the little girl. No, I didn't. Uh, No, I didn't. Leave me alone. Miss Gartner, Jasmine won't leave me alone, the little boy said aloud while half crying. When the teacher walked up to the two children, she saw little Timmy crying. He looked up at the teacher with tears in his eyes, pointing to Jasmine while sobbing. She won't leave me alone. Oh, Timmy, it's okay. She didn't mean those awful words. Did you, Jasmine? The teacher said as she looked up at the determined little girl. Miss Gartner dropped to one knee, hugged little Timmy, almost in tears herself, and said, Timmy, dear, what happened? After little Timmy was able to control himself and hold back the sniffles and tears, he muttered, Jasmine says I took her her cookie, but but I didn't. Miss Gardner held little Timmy in her arms as she looked at Jasmine to ask, Sweetheart, is this true? Did little Timmy take your cookie? Miss Gartner, I got up to talk with Anne Marie and walked away from my bag that had my lunch in it. I turned around and saw Timmy reach in and take the special cookie my mother had made for me. I saw him put it in his book bag. When I asked for it back, he grinned and walked away. Miss Gartner, make him give it back, Jasmine said with an unwavering voice, looking the teacher straight in her eyes. There, there, dear. It's okay, we'll find out what happened, Miss Gartner reassured Jasmine. Angela paused at the top of the stairs, looking back to watch the same play that she had lived at their age unfold in front of her. The lie had heard it all just as Angela had, its ears perked up to the sound of dishonesty. It glowed with a sickly smile and said, Please, feed me more. It doesn't matter who tells the lie. Anyone's will do. The lie's eyes passed the flap of the book bag to gaze on this fledgling liar. It added another layer of goo from its hairy warts. The bag had seemed as if it had become full of bricks. Angela looked down. There was the lie looking back up at her. Please, the lie spoke to her. Just one more lie, please. Miss Gardner asked little Timmy, If I look in your bag, will I find the cookie? Little Timmy sniffed without an answer. 
still trying to settle his breathing. I don't know, he cried. Angela realized the lie was no longer fully in her book bag. It had now attached itself to her hand. She saw how excited the lie had become. Its red glowing eyes opened wide. It seemed as if the lie would overflow from her bag. Tammy, Miss Gardner said in a loud, commanding voice, will I find the cookie in your book bag? Yes, little Timmy trembled. It's there. I I took it. I'm sorry. Jasmine, can you forgive me? It looks so yummy. Once the truth had been told, the lie shrank into the corner of the book bag. Angela sighed and was relieved, but denied any of this had happened. The bell rang as it was time to go to class. Miss Gardner told Jasmine and Timmy, No time for this foolishness now. It's time for class, as she stood up to rush off. As Angela walked through the large doors of the main entrance, Sandy ran up to her and spoke out in an angry, high-pitched, rushed voice. I can't believe you told your sister that Danny and I made out by the bathroom. I know you were in that room. I was standing outside the bathroom and saw you. I went outside and saw Jenny and told her. How could you do this to Martha? She is not responsible for the terrible thing you did. I'm not going to let you get away with this. Angela stood up tall, but was still three inches shorter than Sandy. I don't know what you're talking about, but if you don't want your mother to know about you and Danny making out, I would keep quiet, she said in a small voice. Sandy looked up, dismayed, and without a word, walked away. Although this was not a lie, the lie always enjoyed blackmail. The simple exchange between Angela and Sandy was enough. The lie slithered out of the book bag and up Angela's arm to mount itself on her shoulders like a shawl. The lie smiled and oozed. Angela was no longer in control. As she walked down the hall, no one seemed to notice, and those who did looked the other way, so the lies around their own shoulders would not be seen. Miss Curtis saw Angela walking down the hall and asked her to come into the classroom for a moment. As she entered, she could see Martha sitting in the far corner of the room, crying with her head resting on her crossed arms. Angela's heart went out to Martha, but she knew that helping her meant speaking the truth. The lie promised Angela that the truth would hurt more. The lie wrapped itself around her and was in total control. She was just merely its puppet. Miss Curtis told Angela, Martha has suffered greatly since you said she was the one that had done this thing. Her mother believes you and has made her do more chores than is fair. No one knows for sure what really happened. Angela, please bring this horror to an end. Please tell me the truth and I will believe you. If you have compassion in your heart, I will make sure it will work out well for everyone. Miss Curtis, how many times do I have to go through this? I have told you what I saw and believe to be true. I saw Martha walk out of the room at that time. Why am I being attacked again? I, Angela said with a firm voice, determined to get her point across. But before she could get another word out, Martha pulled herself together, jumped out of her chair and in one motion was across the room, face to face with Angela. The words came out of her mouth and the truth came out like it had a life of its own. Miss Curtis, she's lying. Can't you see it? It's all over her. It's a lie. I can see it. I know the truth. It's a lie. It's a lie. Why don't you see it? Poor Martha said as she collapsed back into the chair, wailing with her face in her hands. The lie oozed and grew with its red eyes hovering above Angela's eyes. 
It almost covered her entire head now. The lie was bigger than Angela. Her small brown eyes were barely able to peer out from the lump that encompassed her. The lie felt like a pile of bricks on her shoulders. Pure mana, the lie thought while feeding on the poor girl's despair. Miss Curtis walked up to Martha, placed her hand directly on her head and asked, What proof do you have, my dear? What proof do I have? What proof does she have? Martha said, shooting out of the chair, exasperated, only to collapse back into it. Can't you see it? It's a lie. Right there. All over Angela. Right there. Angela said, calming with the strength of the voice of the ages that the lie had given her. Why are we on the hunt for a truth that doesn't matter anymore? I mean, what does it matter? What does it matter who made this thing happen? She turned to stare at Martha. Why aren't we trying to figure out how to keep it from happening again? Please stop talking to me about what you think has happened and talk to me about how it will never happen again. If you can't do that, then why should I listen to you? Angela exclaimed. She continued, honestly, I'm only trying to help. What can I do to help? What can we do to stop this? We will find who did this if we work together, but first we have to keep it from happening again. Isn't that what's really going on here? Miss Curtis, Martha jumped up and screamed. Miss Curtis, can't you see the lie there? Right there, right on Angela's shoulders. It's looking right at me with its dark red eyes. Miss Curtis, make it stop, Martha screamed. I can't do this anymore. I'd rather be thought as the one. Martha ran out of the classroom wailing. Miss Curtis turned to Angela scowling and said, Well, what do you have to say about this? Are you just going to stand there and say nothing? Do nothing? Angela lifted her head, looked the teacher straight in the eye and said, are we still here? Are we still lost in the past? I don't know what Martha was so worried about. We'll fix this. Just trust me to do what's right. The day was long and no one talked to Angela as she walked down the halls of the school. All eyes were on her during the walk home. She ran far in front of the group to get away from their quips. Angela ran up the front porch steps and swung open the screen door and fell into her chair at the breakfast table whimpering. Her mother came down the stairs into the kitchen to sit in the chair next to Angela and hugged her. She said, My dear, you can stop all of this now, if you want. Angela looked up from the table, tears running from her eyes and down her cheeks. How did you know? She sobbed. Honey, all of us that try to live with the truth can see the true nature of the lie. If we can't see it, we feel it. We know it's there. Mom, what can I do? How do I make this right? I don't want to live with this lie anymore. Angela said while still crying. Reaching up to touch Angela's cheek, the only visible spot left on her face that was not covered by the lie, her mother said reassuringly, You don't have to live with the lie anymore. You have to live with the truth now. You have to tell the truth tall. Make right to those you have wronged. And don't let a lie ever get hold of you again. Once you live in the truth, you will be strong and people will see that in you. Your honesty will shine like a beacon to others to shed their lies that they carry. Angela's mother said all of this with love and trust in her eyes. She hugged her and then stood up from the chair and said, So what do you think? Is it time for hot chocolate? With whipped cream? Angela said while the tears from her eyes melted away the lump of the lie that tried to consume her. 
Angela was barely able to say the words without breaking into a sobbing whimper. Mom, there couldn't be a more truer thing ever said. Angela took the cup with both hands and sipped, thinking tomorrow would be a better day. A better day living with the truth, rather than carrying the weight of a lie.